Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Conquering Dreams. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Today, I now have a guest. I have a guest on the show. I'm bringing this back to the fold so no longer be, well, it's going to be some episodes of me just talking, but I know y'all are tired of me rambling. So now I'm bringing somebody else on so we could talk about how she's conquering her dream and what she's doing and what her actual dream is. And that's the whole point of this show is to really bring people in as business owners, and entrepreneurs that have went from working for the man, quote unquote, mm-hmm. to now becoming the man, right. you know, and I and in, in, the, in the process in between. So welcome to the show, Tawanda. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm very, I'm well. How about you? I'm doing good. That's good. So tell the audience a little, uh, a little bit about yourself. Well, my name, I'm Tawanda and I am in the trucking industry. Uh, my parents got me into the trucking industry kind of right out of high school. I did join the military. Um, I did that for a couple of years. I was in the reserve. Um, so they brought me into that really like two or three years out of high school. And I've just been in it ever since. Um, I have been within the inter office of it all. Um, I tell everybody, they're like, Tawanda, what do you do in the trucking industry? You don't drive a truck, do you? No, I can't drive. I can barely drive a car. Um, I, so I let everybody know that I can do everything besides drive a truck, basically. Right. Um, so I do trucking. I do a few other things as well. Um, I have, with me being an administrative in the military, I was a paralegal specialist. Um, so when I was in the unit, unfortunately, I did not get to do very many legal duties. So I took on a lot of just administrative duties. Um, with me and my background in truck and being everything within the office, the behind the scenes, the business side of it, um, I have formed a administrative assistant, personal assistant service as well. So that is something that is pretty new um, that I have started offering services to the public as well. But I'm just kind of feeling out there, just trying to live my purpose. I like I like trucking. I love trucking. I'm thankful that my parents did get me into it, but I did kind of start getting burnt out a little bit. So I kind of started reaching out there for something else. And some a friend on social media actually posted something about finding your purpose and stop trying to just to just stop and actually Stop overthinking, trying to find your purpose. Your purpose could be something that you're doing in your everyday life. And I was like, I like (laughs) helping people. I love business. I like the administrative, the back office side of things. So let me run with that. And then that's how the administrative virtual assistant business started. And then kind of as I was putting everything together, I was like, I could actually start consulting and mentoring people and getting people in the trucking industry because trucking is never going anywhere. Right. There's all these plans and things that they're discussing like way in the future with, you know, truck, self-driving trucks and whatnot. But trucking is never going anywhere there. I figure they're always going to need humans at a bare minimum to be in the trucks if they if they're autonomous or not. So I figure. Let me bring my people and let them know, like a lot of people know about trucking, but it's not a very glamorous business. It's not something that you can add when you're at a career fair. They're like, hey, you want to be a truck driver? And like, no, it's not not, not really. Scale of one (laughs) to 10 on the sexy level is like a one. It's like a zero. (laughs) Because it's like from what you see, you see old Billy Bob truck driver with his like cowboy straw hat. But it's really... If you think about it, everything that we have in our lives, the day to day from your notepad to my jacket to the lights, everything in here, everything gets to us by someone who has a CDL license. Right. So we need to get in this pot and do what we do. Right. You know, because, you know, we talk um, off air a couple of weeks ago about things. And we were just talking about like how a lot of stuff that, um, that makes money that has a lot of value to it. You don't even really realize, right. you know, now, like you were saying, even to this table, like somehow th- this table got to here via a truck at some point, exactly. And you know, somebody with a CDL license. But like you said, you don't see that no. on social media. You don't see it out there. Like advertised as a, as a, good career to have 
because now what made me so interested about you was you made a career out of the truck driving business without even touching the steering wheel of a truck. <laughs> you don't want me to, but yes, right. that's 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 kind of how my brain always works. Um, I, in anything that I do, I try to make it, well, not really how can I make money off of this, but I think it all the way through to a point where if I wanted to pursue this as something, like just something to make a little bit of money off of, how can I do it where I'm working smarter, not harder? Like, ha- let me lay back and sit back and see who's the behind the scenes person. Cause I'm always interested in what's done behind the scenes. Like, how mm-hmm. did it get to this level? Not really, oh, you see all these lights, cameras, action, and this person who's smiling. Like, who's behind that? What, how did it all get here? So that's kind of what took me there. Um, like I said, I've done everything within the trucking industry, started out just not even knowing anything, just kind of getting shoved in it. Like, hey, Tawanda, we need like me and your dad, we're going on the road. We need somebody in the house who can look on this board and find us some loads. I'm going to show you how to do it real quick and then you'll be here doing it. And from there, it just kind of evolved. And even in trucking. So briefly talk about that. Talk about that whole Briefly, I know it can get lengthy on the, how a person gets from point A to point B. So let's talk about the mechanics or the logistics of a one truck driver and administrative part. This well, dispatch, I should say. Well, as far as, OK, any trucking company, you're going to have your driver and your truck. That's basically all the general public knows. You have a driver and you have a truck. Well, outside of that, you have to have. You have to have a dispatcher sales because you have to. How do you get this freight? How do these people know that you're out here and you exist and that you can move their product from A to B? So one, you have your sales. You have your people who are going to go sit down and build a relationship with these people. And then outside of that, then that's where it comes to your office staff. You need a dispatcher. You need someone who can effectively communicate with not only your customers, but your truck drivers. Um, You, in essence, you become a one-stop shop as a dispatcher. You're a counselor, a therapist, your customer service, right. billing. Like you, you take on all of these roles in one because you not only have to turn on this persona for the customers where it's like, well, yes, I, okay, when can you accept this freight? These are the times that we have available. This is the driver that I have available. I, and then you also have to take into consideration you're, you're mandated by the federal motor carriers. So there's very strict rules is in regards to hours of service that you have to follow when making all of these appointments. So there's a lot of back end things that you have to keep in the back of your mind when actually dispatching a driver. So once you get to the point of actually dispatching a driver, then that's where you truck drivers are a special breed and they're, they are special people. They're a special type of person. Um, And you have to have a certain type of personality to deal with truck drivers. Mm -hmm. So you have to turn, take off your customer service hat and put on your dispatcher hat and kind of cater to the drivers. You instruct them on where, when, how, what, and all of that good stuff. You kind of coach them and make sure that you're checking on them because you want a lot of some issues you see in the industry today. A driver will just go lease onto a company and they feel like I'm just some driver but how you keep them and how you get you turn just a driver into a professional driver is you treat them like an actual human being. You treat them like an actual business owner because that's what a lot of drivers are. They're actually business owners and they're just out here trying to have a career just like anyone else. So you treat them with a certain level of respect. You treat them like they're business owners and you mold them into this professional person that you need them to be because they are a direct reflection of your company. So once you have them all dispatched and you get them on the way, they're there and go about the process of delivering and whatnot and then returning equipment. And it's a very repetitive thing, but in business, it's all in your your relationships, how you interact with people. So you, you really have to be 
I can't say you have to be a people person because I started out not being a people person. I was very but, shy. But the, but, but the position turned you into it, that. I, it pushed me to be all of these things I would have never imagined. I never in a million years thought I would be sitting here talking to someone on a podcast because I am very reserved. I'm very to myself. I'm a sit back and observe type of person. But being in trucking, it's pushed me. I had to go sit down in front of these customers to make sure that we had freight so that we could have drivers to lease onto our companies. And we would have something for the drivers to do to make them stay. Because if you don't have work, they're just going to go wherever. Because there's there are a few trucking companies. There's quite a few trucking companies, especially in this area, because we are a port dominant city. We have three major major ports here. So. This is a very large area for the trucking industry. There's a lot of companies here, but you will find a lot of guys hop around because you'll, they'll tell you they didn't they don't know how to treat people. So mm-hmm. in order to be successful, I found in any business because I've like I said I've been in I've been in the military. I have worked those collections jobs at call centers, mm-hmm. and regardless of what actual industry or what my job at that point in time was. I found that how you interact with people will really determine your longevity and your success, really. Right. So So what what so what got you what got you to the point where you said, you know what, this is my purpose, is my calling to do this. I got to this point weirdly. I have worked at three or four trucking companies. And the last trucking company I worked for, it was a situation where I had, I was working for my mother. She opened her own trucking company Mm -hmm. and it was doing great. Everything was good. Working with family can be very hard. It did put a strain on our relationship. So I decided to, I was faced with a decision on do I want to just work for her and she be my boss and we work and try to build this together, but it was ruining ruining our personal relationship. Or do I want to step away from it with her and salvage the relationship that I had with my mother? Which was a very big decision for me because in my mind, I was building something for my family, for our family. So, but in the end, I decided that I wanted to salvage my relationship with my mother. So I decided to step away. That was a hard blow for me because to me, I felt like that was a failure. I took it as a failure. That's Mm -hmm. a failure. My biggest thing, my biggest fear has always been a failure. But later down the line, I learned that you cannot fear failure because failure is not really failure. It's just a stepping stone to build you up. So after that, I went and I took a major pay cut. I started working at this last trucking company. And when I got there, it was just, it was, it was weird because I had never experienced this. Like I just went in there. I put my best foot forward from the first day that I stepped in there. Right. I started out as an entry level, like settlement position, something that I could do in my sleep. And I worked through it. I worked up to settlements manager in a matter of six months from settlements manager. I went to dispatch assistant. I was doing settlements management and helping the dispatch department. Mm -hmm. Then from there, I went up, I was doing sales and it was like, I have this billion dollar company, these men who really trust me to go sit down with these customers like Walmart and Target and with these big box companies. And it was like, they're really entrusting all of this in me. So it really gave me the confidence that I needed. And then from there, eventually I got terminal manager. That's really kind of like the top of the top. I was running a terminal. We had about 15 employees. We had 80 trucks. I helped open up a terminal in Florida where we opened up a separate division. We opened up a terminal in Philadelphia. So I was feeling like right. I did it. Like, this is it. I did it. And then year three hit and the company was not very organized. And I did voice. I think I may have overstepped and voiced my mind where I was a little, maybe I got too comfortable. I don't know. But outside of that, 
They had their own issues, but I was willing to stick with it because I saw the bigger picture. I was like, we can make this work. We just get the right people in here. But it was just like certain stuff I was telling them was just, and it it was had to deal with finances. So it was just weird. But in the end, a swift blow to my gut and just rocked my world. I got fired for no reason. Virginia's an at-will state. They didn't really have to give me a reason. Right. Um, At the end of the day, it got kind of explained to me as a, well, he didn't agree with certain things and he didn't want to keep you. I fought for you. And then when I sp- spoke to the other owner, it was kind of like the blame game amongst each other. So I just chalked it up. I will never really know what I will what never happened? really know what happened. But I know that it affected me in a great way because. It was like, okay, I failed my family. I failed these drivers. Like I thought I was doing something great and I just get fired. Like what in the world? So I'm collecting my unemployment. And as the weeks are going by, I am start getting phone calls from customers. And it was right. like, hey, what happened? Do you want to come work for us? another customer, another customer, then trucking companies like our direct competitors who I would be sitting across in these board meetings. And we would like at these trade meetings, uh, not trade, but like bid meetings, they started calling me. Right. Hey, you found anywhere right, yet? Right. Like, are you, I heard that you're doing your own thing and I'm not doing nothing but sitting at home collecting my unemployment, right. like wallowing in my depression because I feel like a failure. Right. So it was... So these calls are coming and then drivers start calling me like, look, Tawanda, if you want to start a company, we'll give you the money. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? (laughs) Like, I just got fired and like, you guys want to try and it's like, man, you know what you're doing and you're like, you really, you give us the real and you never try to sugarcoat. You never like, we meet so many people who try to do so much shady stuff. And he was like, no, like whatever you need. So I sat and then my husband, he was like, Tawanda, because we also had our own trucking company and we decided our situation was a little bit different, just got into bed with the wrong type of customers. So we had to just kind of step back and let our customers know we're revamping. And I decided that's when I went back into the workforce. So it was, he was like, Tawanda, I don't know why you got this whole self-doubt thing. You act like you have not done this a million times over. Like, look how many, like, stop and look and look at, look how you, every company you went to was like kind of mom and pop-ish. But then you guys went there and you put in the work and you got every trucking company, 30, 40, 50 drivers. This last, you had 70, 80 drivers. You guys maxed out at like 120 drivers. Amongst all the terminals, right. he was like, you played a part in that. You did the legwork. Like, you did it. Stop doubting yourself. Why do you think these people, they're not reaching out to you for no reason. Like, they can right. go on Indeed and find anybody's resume. These people are looking for you. Right. And they put in some hard work and effort because I'm one, I don't really give out my numbers. So they really had to put in some work to kind of track right. me down. So you get all these people telling you how great you are that your husband telling you how great you are but i just at what point did you realize that you was great when my husband broke it down to me and i really sat and i thought about the track record and thinking about the drivers i was like you know what i can do this like but you'll never know tawanda until you really go out there and do it but i also knew that i didn't want to just go and open up a trucking company now i did i Initially, I was just going to go and open up another trucking company, but financially, it just, it didn't make sense for me at that time because it was like, do I risk everything? And me, because I have a child, I just, I was scared to take that risk. I need to have that security. So I, um, I did, I just didn't want to take that risk. So I went and I do have a job, but I decided that I'm going to take what I know because people reach out to me and I made a post. I'm very private, but I made one post and off that one post, people were like, you in trucking? I didn't know that. Can I hit you up? And then my inbox and it was like, can you tell me, how do I get into right, trucking? How right. do I get my CDLs? And I was like, Twanda, why are you sleeping on yourself? Just stop, right. just stop. So I was like, okay, let me put it on paper, put it on paper, made a plan. And here we are. So I'm just going to run with it. Everybody else believes in me. So I need to believe in myself. 
And me, the more that I put myself out here and do videos and make myself uncomfortable, I'm getting this awesome feedback. So I know that if I just stick with it and keep going, in no time, I will have offices set up all right. over right. and where I can offer consulting. I can, my ultimate goal is I want to have a trucking company because since I've been in it so long, we have nephew. I have nephews. I have a son. They love trucks. So I want a trucking company still. I, that will be what I leave for my my family. They can either, if they want to work in it, if they want to drive trucks, if they want to run it, if they mm. want to put people in it and let them run it. And it, But there will be a trucking company that will be set up for the family that we can pass on generation to generation. And then, but my thing, my baby is the consulting because I like helping people. I generally like facilitating and seeing people make their dreams come true. Whether it's, you just want to be, you. how do I get my CDL? I don't have a problem showing like, here, you can go to the DMV and get the CDL book, or you can go online here. You can take this practice test 20 times before you go in there. Or, hey, I know this person. He has a truck. He doesn't mind showing you. Like, I don't mind making that connection for people because it used to be, what, six degrees, seven degrees of separation? Yeah, right, right. It's a lot smaller now with social yeah. media. So it's like someone you may, someone you may not know. Like, we, like you said, we sat right. down a few weeks ago and you know people that are in truck driving, right. but you still had some questions you're considering. So I am glad that I was able to come in here. You said that, okay, I've reached out to a few people and I got the brochure rundown. The, right. This is why it's great. Right. Come on. It's awesome. But I want to tell people the good, the bad, the indifferent. I want to tell, give you everything because right. I don't want you to invest everything that you have thinking because I made the, I gave you the brochure rundown. Like this is awesome. But I didn't right. tell you that huh, Right. this will suck you dry in a heartbeat. If you don't know what you're doing, a lot of people don't get that part. And that's what happens in this industry. Unfortunately, right. there's a lot that people so don't put out there. Is there, is there in the trucking industry, like a, um, like a threshold, like, um, for instance, is it three trucks? Then you pass the problem area. Is it fifteen trucks? Is it ten? What is the threshold to where you once you get past that certain level? It's kind of like I have now don't have to really worry as much in the beginning stages of a business. To be honest, you never get there in trucking because I'm not going to say you never get there in trucking if you have a solid team because you have to have a trend a team in this industry because one, this industry is ever changing. There's a lot of components that you deal with in this industry that are out of your control. You have to deal with brokers. We have to deal with customs, seizing products and containers or sh any type of shipment for however long they want to. Mm -hmm. um, you have to deal with, there is a lot of, I, I don't know the right word to use for this. I guess like, hidden fees in the trucking industry. Gotcha. There are tons of hidden fees. So if you don't do this by this date, this hidden fee will sneak up on you. And before you know it, all of your profit is paid to hidden fees. So if you can have a solid team that is trained and they know what to look for, you can be successful and only have two trucks. Mm -hmm. And it just depends on what your like what your idea of success is. Is right. success you being able to maintain your two trucks, pay my household bills, and go on vacation twice a year? You can do that with two trucks. You can do that with one truck. If your idea of success is I want to be able to have five trucks, have take care of my my personal bills, have two vacation properties go on vacation three times a year and take care of my aunt and some right, right. like, so it just depends on what your level of success is. Because to me, when I first got in it, it was like, okay, if I have a trucking company, all I want is like three or four trucks. That's it. Right. 
And I kind of do still feel like that because really the more you have, the more you take on, like they say, more money, more problems. Trucking industry stink. The more equipment, the more headaches because there are just inevitable things that are just right. out of your so control. So like three, four trucks, what's the, the gross in a year on three, four trucks in revenue? If you get you a good contract, you can gross. You could have you a million. You could gross in over a million dollars in a year with three to four trucks. Because in this industry, it's all in what you negotiate. There's so many different types of customers right. out here. I specifically, at the moment, deal with intermodal cargo, which is cargo that comes in containers that is shipped through. It comes into a port, either NIT, VIT, PMT. Um, intermodal, car- intermodal cargo is all in which you can negotiate. You will hear, if you sit amongst owner operators, drivers, or just someone who owns a business, you will hear them talk about how they kind of don't really like when new carriers come around or the smaller carries because there's a lot of underbidding. There is not a lot of solidarity in this industry. I can honestly say right. that, um, which is something that needs to change, which is part of why I want to go into consulting because I want to create solidarity amongst these carries instead of so much of a competition. Yes, I understand that it is a competition, but there's so much freight. Everybody, you can't move everything that comes into this country. You just right. can't. There's freight out here for everybody. So instead of creating this market where the customers or the brokers don't want to pay for the freight because everybody, their thing is, well, let me underbid this person just so I can get my foot in the door. No, that kills the industry. That's why you, that's why now there's a struggle to find good drivers who can know that they need to make a certain amount to maintain, maintain their equipment and to be able to turn a profit so they can take care of their household. Because you have to think these most 80 percent of these drivers are owner operators. Mm-hmm. Owner operators are drivers who own their truck. So they are a business. Right. So they have business expenses just like. Someone who has a store, a store right, right, right. or an office, they have to maintain those certain business expenses. So all after those expenses, they also have to take care of their household because that's their career. So smaller companies tend to undercut the larger companies, which creates this kind of big thing. We need to get rid of that whole mentality as a whole in this industry because the drivers suffer in the end. And because yeah, if because if they're if the smaller company is driving the price down, then it's the margins is going to go down. Exactly. So it it makes in in essence it makes it hard for everybody. So. Right. It's all in what you negotiate. I can honestly say that I have I have been that newbie person as I will. They offered you what five fifty. I'll do it for you for five twenty. I right. have been that person, mm-hmm. but through my experience and seeing what just a driver and then a professional driver, there is two different, totally opposite opposite spectrums. So the quality of work, the level of work. And like I said, you have to trust that these guys are out here representing you Mm -hmm. because they're driving for you. But the customer only sees the driver most of the time, unless you're a person who goes out to see these customers. You'll never see these people that you have built this great relationship with. You communicate a lot via email because the brokers and the customers they're most of the time they're not even here in Virginia they're in California they're overseas in China somewhere so a lot of it's through email right. I strongly suggest I like the face to face I believe face to face will never go out of style we're in an era now where internet and social media is right. taking over but face to face still does wonders because you can take an email wrong you can take a text message wrong but Mm -hmm. when you're sitting face to face and you can see someone's facial expressions and hear their emotions in their voice it it does something to that relationship that i don't think you can get it has it's the the glue to the for the relationship right Right. so i think so i'm gonna ask a question has amazon hurt or helped the trucking industry 
my personal opinion, I say it's help because it has Amazon. I have is the only company that I have seen where you can do a lot of things within Amazon. For if you are a carrier, meaning you're someone who has your own operating authority to lease on trucks or you have your own trucks, you can lease your carrier on with Amazon. You can sign up with Amazon and move freight that way. Mm -hmm. If you are just a one man, one truck type deal, you can lease on the Amazon as a way to get your foot in the door and start out that way. If you were, they have this program where they're offering like their warehouse workers, you, they are offering an incentive for the workers because they are picking up, like they're growing so much. Um, a lot of companies have dropped them like FedEx and UPS as far as delivering for Amazon specifically since they have opened up their own transportation branch. So they're offering their employees incentives and like nice severance packages to start their own transportation company right. to help deliver this stuff. So any, I think anybody that is really offering to help um, to bring light onto this industry, I think it's a positive. Now you will see the people who say, oh, it's crap <laughs> because I mean, it's just like me going and working for, I work right. for these different co right. uh, companies and I was like, okay, it was great, but I want to go do my own thing. Right. Same thing. Yeah. But I think that I like it because they're actually helping. They're not turning away the newer carriers because I've seen guys who out the gate, they go get their authority. And it's sometimes it can be hard trying to find customers. Amazon, not an issue. Right. They sign on with them. Yeah, the reason why I mentioned Amazon is because, you know, they're sitting on a pile of cash and in the Swoop of a hat instead of paying all these million or billions of dollars in taxes, they can say, Well, we can just create our own transportation company, you know, overnight. And it seems like what you're, what you're telling me because I you gave me some information I didn't know what them offering the sentence for them for the people in the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Hey, I need more drivers than I need people in this warehouse. So, and people don't even know there's another part which I have, I've, I haven't just found out about it, I've just become more interested in it. These cargo vans, you can go out and get a cargo van. That's transportation industry. There's this new company set up. It's called Laser Ship. They deliver for Amazon. They deliver for these small pharmaceutical com uh, companies like mm -hmm. to pharmacies and whatnot. That's transportation. It's the same thing, just in a smaller scale. So Amazon's actually, they opened up a whole, they, for me, they shed light on a whole different part of right. the industry that I was like, so I can go get a cargo van because I can't drive a truck. I never want to try to learn how to drive right. a truck, but a cargo van I maybe could do. And it's like, so I can go get a cargo van. I don't have to go get my CDL, but I could still drive and do deliveries and make a, a living off of it to be able to support my family and pay my bills. Yes, that's a whole different part of transportation. It's so simple that I never even, but they are... That's what they're offering. You work in a warehouse, they're giving you money. They're giving away the, if you see these prime flex vans, right? They are offering severance packages and, and giving them money to invest in those vans and give them the startup money to start their own company. Wow. Be your own boss. And it helps Amazon too. Yeah. So, I mean, at first I was like, how he not pay? You make all this money, you ain't pay no taxes, but this is what you, I guess this is what you did. This is how I'm looking at it. Right. So I was like, okay, all right, I could take that. That's, yeah, he's that, creating, he's yeah. creating work for people. Right. And creating um, work and jobs, which also benefits Amazon. So in closing, I want everybody uh, listening and watching on um, YouTube, how do we get a hold of you? And if we want to... Um, start a trucking business and he's like, okay, the first step is to contact Tawanda. What information do you require them to come to you with? I require you to come to me with your idea. When I first sit down with you, I introduce, hi, I'm Tawanda. I've been in trucking X amount of years. You want to get in trucking? What's your plan? Tell me what you want to do. 
So you tell me what you think you want to do, and then I'll tell you from what I've heard you tell me, I'll tell you what steps you can take, and I will give you the good, the bad, the indifferent. And then right. if you want to switch it up and come back later, or if you want to go ahead with it, because you know what? Out of everything you said, I still think I can make it happen. I'll be right there with you the whole step. So if you want to get in touch with me, um, you can find me on Facebook, Tawanda Walker. Um, I do have my, I currently promote everything for my personal assistant page, which is a call away uh, administrative services. I am you, but you can really, really reach me Facebook to Wanda Walker uh, or shoot me a text. Give me a phone call. 757-371-2482. I'm always available. Um, I just want to make it. I'm going to turn trucking glamorous. I swear <laughs> I am like I on my day to day because I currently do safety. This is kind of how I look because I'm always I get right. dirty some way, form or fashion, but. This is why I'm stepping out and doing consulting because I'm going to make trucking fabulous. I'm going to make it so appealing that I'm like, okay, okay. I, like I want to start taking it to my son. They offer, they do, you know how they do the career day. Mm -hmm. Coming up there with trucks and show you all the great things you can do. Being a truck, I hate a truck driver. So I'm going to open up the doors to this. I'm going to open up kids' eyes to this, show them that if you want to get a CDL and you want to drive, you can do that. You can see the entire United States driving a truck and actually get out, not just flying over states, but get out, walk around and do all of that. Driving a truck, getting right. paid. If you don't want to take that route, you just want to be an entrepreneur and start a business. I can take you that route, too. Right. I can give you, but I will give you, I'll tell you all the secrets that no, everybody acts like it's a secret. I'll give you all of that because if you don't have the the seasoning, you're is it's, it's gonna turn out real nasty <laughs> right. and bland. Yes, and like I wasted my money. Yes, you did. Because you need to have the seasonings. You need to know about these last free days, these uh, ETA days, this demerge and detention and free time. There's so much terminology and there's so many. Like I said hidden fees in this industry, <laughs> right? it'll eat you alive. I've seen it happen so many times, but. It I'm seems like it's like learning a whole foreign different language that you are well versed in. Yeah. And I want to, I, I will let you know. I don't, I'm not going to hide it from you. I'm going to let you know because there's no point. I don't want to be that person who I'll, I'll set you up for the business, but I'm not setting you up for success. There's no point in me doing what I'm doing if you're not going to be successful at it. I'll give right. you everything you need to know to the best of my ability. So, And I'll set you up for success. And I pray that you take what I do give you or what I train your staff in doing and you maintain the success. Right. Because it can definitely be maintained. As long as you have the seasonings for it, you'll be good. You'll have your hiccups every now and then because every business every has business got hiccups. Yeah, right. it regardless. You, right. So... But I'll give you your seasoning in this industry, specifically tailored to this industry, because there's plenty of money in it. But I'll give you everything that you need to know so that you can be successful and maintain that success. It's good to hear. Y'all heard it here. I bring y'all the best people to be able to help you have your profitable side business, your side hustle that can turn into a main hustle. Thank you so much, Tawanda, for coming here. Thank you for having me. This is your host, C.B. Baker. Till next time.